Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be talking about modules or game packs and building with modules and how you create them. Today I'm looking closely at walls but this could apply to any game pack that you wish to make. This is all part of the series where I'm making models for the game Atlas Empires and you can find playlists of that and links to the details of the game in the description. So first of all, here's the concept art that I was given, and you can see the different designs that I'm expected to make. And it goes from level 1 through to level 10, and here's my result. And each section has the sort of base of the fence, but it also has an end post. So if you were to take this into a game, you could easily duplicate this and build a fence without too much issues. I'm going to add an array modifier. I'll put it on minus 0.95 so it digs into itself. And now I can just create my fence like that. So this is great for making environments and array modifiers are very handy for that. You've got your count here and the offset value there. So normally this is set to one, but you can see there's a tiny gap in between my fence. So I've set it to 0.95 so that they all dig into each other. Now obviously I need to create the end post as well or export the end post as well. If I go to top view, then I can duplicate that and put that at the end there and then I have my completed fence. Now the problem you might come across is the shading issues. I've got one light in my scene at the moment. If I take that light out by going to look dev, you can see it's a little bit flat. It's not too bad to be honest. And there's enough difference between the two objects, but because these are modular and each of these are the same, I can't paint shading on the inside here because it would show up on this one here. So I have to leave that completely flat. Normally I'd like to shade around that area so there's some contrast between the two. And that's one of the disadvantages of building with modules, but one of the huge advantages is that you can build environments really quickly if you break your scene down into modular pieces. Here's some examples of asset packs, as they're sometimes known as, on Pinterest. And here's a good example here. You can see how this structure can be separated into sections and repeated over and over to create a great environment. The same with this, you can see the repetition in the panels and here's an even better example and they've even listed it module one two three and so on so take a look on places like Pinterest or Sketchfab and look at how people have created their modules and their asset packs to get more ideas the most difficult thing when modeling in modules like this is to think about the join area so in this case if I move my endpoint and join them together this is fairly simple as I can just add an array modifier and keep going because the joins fairly straightforward but if I have a plane and I want to join these together there's going to be some obvious overlap and that's where it's useful to have some sort of object in the middle where it can sort of push into that way it will get rid of visible seams between your two objects the only thing is you might need an extra one of these to go at the end as an end point so there's just a basic introduction to using modules and asset packs and the usefulness of using them to create your environments. Do check out the playlists and my website gabbit.co.uk for more courses. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.